What is grace? Grace is community. Grace is passion. Grace is for everyone. Today we continue our series on Moses. We started with his birth story, then the murder he committed. Moses fled to the desert and was welcomed in. But the story continued last week with a powerful call of God on his life. Moses saw the burning bush and heard God say that he would be an instrument of Israel's redemption. They would be freed by this man who thought he couldn't do what God asked him to do. Now we skip ahead a bit. Uh, Moses leaves Midian to tell the Israelite leaders about what is going to happen. They are ecstatic. They are convinced by a miraculous sign and, and ready to follow Moses. So Moses goes to the Pharaoh to convince him to free Israel, but he won't do it. Things actually get harder on the Israelites, and they are mad at Moses. But hear what God says to Moses. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and I will multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. When Pharaoh does not listen, I will bring my people out. So there are ten plagues. The Nile turns blood red, perhaps from algae blooms. Uh, Then there are frogs, gnats, flies, pestilence. When we come to today's scripture, Karen is going to read for us from the book of Exodus. Uh, This is the instructions for what to do before the final plague, that tenth plague. If Israel is going to avoid it, they must follow some very particular steps. Let's hear about the very first Passover from Exodus Chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. Hear now the word of the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, Clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch as you really are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been crucified, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, may we be an inclusive community, passionately following Jesus Christ. Be our rock and our redeemer as you work in us and through us to bless the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
I once had the chance to travel to the Swiss mountains, and I remember being surprised at the top of a gondola that there was no peak at the top of this mountain, just a large, flat area. It was so large, in fact, that there was an entire farm at the top of this mountain with fencing, animals, and a small pond. As we walked around this large area, the animals came to greet us, and we talked about what animals they had on their farm. Uh, You would think this would be very straightforward. A chicken is a chicken, and a duck is a duck. But what can be much harder to parse out is a sheep and a goat. Uh, Two of us were convinced they were goats, and others were sure that they were sheep. But the question is, how can you tell? Uh, I know it may seem like an odd pairing, but if I wasn't a pastor, I would probably be a game show host. Uh, You can ask my wife, Emily. She'll tell you I love the fun, the banter, and not knowing what will happen next. Uh, So maybe you could indulge me for a moment and play along in a little game with me. The game is simply called goat or sheep, all right? And I think we'll have a few images up on the screen in a little bit for you, but first here, uh, you shear it for its wool. It is a sheep, yes, good. Which animal has a beard? The goat, yes. Uh, Here's some Bible trivia for you. According to Matthew 25, which animal is the one that goes to heaven? Oh, a little unsure here. The sheep, yes, a few of you got it. And which one goes to hell? The goat. Mm -hmm. Which animal has horns? Both have horns. Ah, I tricked you on that one, huh? And uh, uh, and do we have the photos up here now? Okay, what kind of animal? Sheep, of course. And the next one, this cute little guy, what's that? That's a goat, yes. Uh, How about this one? Oh, a mix, huh? Okay, so this one is actually famous because the farmer named this little guy Goaty, and it is, in fact, a sheep. (laughs) Uh, This next one's a little tougher. How about this one? Uh, This is a Damara African sheep. Uh, They look a lot like goats, though, don't they? Okay, one last one for you. Okay, and how about this one? All right, that is actually a geep, a genetic crossbreed of a goat and sheep, so everybody was right on that one. Well done. Excellent work. Goats and sheep are from the same family, Bovida, and the subfamily, Caprina, so it makes sense that we might confuse them, right? So, so why review our farm animals on a Sunday morning? Well, what we usually think of as a very simple, straightforward question, a story about goats and sheep being separated and sent to heaven and hell when they are actually quite hard to distinguish. I imagine many of us have similar moments, things that maybe seem like they should be clear-cut, but perhaps aren't. Maybe you feel like this in raising children or dealing with family members. Uh, I remember we had a a wedding scheduled here at Grace, and it seemed like we were pulling teeth to try and get things scheduled here at the church. Uh, We kept wondering, what is wrong that this couple doesn't want to turn in their form to reserve their date for the wedding? They clearly still wanted to have the wedding here, but we were stuck on the very first step. In the office, uh, we kept having a back and forth about this because things just seemed off. It wasn't until months later that we learned that one of the family members was in a fatal car accident. Their whole world was flipped upside down in a moment, and the wedding was put on the back burner. When we found that out, it was like a collective, oh, we get it now. Everything that was happening made so much more sense knowing they had this terrible tragedy. I was so glad that we had responded with grace all the way through the process. We didn't know what was happening, but our staff acted with goodwill despite how things looked. Life is complicated. Our actions, whether we would judge them to be right or wrong, are often a response to someone else's actions. In ancient times, they would say, you are bad if you are the first one to do something wrong. It's an eye for an eye, right? Any wrong move is met with judgment and retaliation. That's why this passage in Exodus 12 is so important. Literally, the world is operating by this law that you take an eye for an eye. The story of Moses, though, 
sends the people of Israel down a new trajectory. There is wrong in this world, whether it's our own or someone else's, and the answer is not to punish the other person to an equal degree to which they have wronged us. No. Moses says the way forward is through the death of a lamb. So let's talk about it. Every year, the Passover is to be celebrated. It marks the start of a brand new year, and the main action is to gather the family together and eat a lamb. Actually, it's not a lamb. Uh, the word is S-E-H in Hebrew, se, and it doesn't just mean lamb. Se is a single head from the flock or smaller cattle, all right? It includes both sheep and goats. When this animal is killed, you have to make sure there are enough family members gathered to eat the whole thing. There should be nothing left and nothing wasted. If you don't have enough people, you have to make sure you join in with another family to eat the whole thing. And the only rules for this animal is, one, it must be a male, which would be less useful to the farmer, and two, it must be a year old. It can't be a baby that you take from its mother, and it can't be older so that it's damaged in some way. With the animal itself, there are actually options here, though. Sheep and goats or any other smaller cattle are perfectly fine. We read that you have to roast it and it can't be boiled. That's probably more about the meat being cut into pieces to cook it. I'm pretty sure God doesn't have strong preferences about whether hot dogs are boiled or grilled, even if my children do. Uh, and then the last instruction is to make sure that you eat it ready to leave, as though something awful were chasing you, because for Egypt there is. Uh, if they don't take the blood from the sacrificed animal and wipe it on their doorposts, this final plague might pass judgment on them. Instead, they can avoid judgment with the blood of the lamb or the goat or any other cattle. That's it. There are many traditions that have been built up over the years around this basic instruction, but this is the core of the Passover. Now, people are often judged by others around them. I don't have to tell you that families have plenty of problems in them. Friends and communities are not always as accepting or caring of one another as they ought to be. So here we see Moses reminding the people that judgment is God's job. We might think that we know which ones are the sheep and which ones go to heaven, but God is saying he'll be the judge of that. And if you've experienced enough of life, you know this. You know there are things beyond your understanding and that the situation a person is in matters. You can't make a right judgment without knowing the details. I was with a teacher the other day who recently had a baby. She said, if I knew how much people loved their own children, I would have done so many things differently. I was a bad teacher. Now, I don't know if she was bad, but it's funny how our experiences can change how we judge a situation. I think of a story of another Moses, uh, a man named uh, known as Father Moses the Black. He lived in the fourth century, was enslaved by the Egyptians, and became embittered during his slavery. He was a, a huge man and was known to be so violent that eventually his owners just let him go. He got caught up with a band of thieves and quickly became their leader. At one time he was trying to rob a man of his sheep, but the shepherd sent for help. Moses was chased until he came to a colony of monks. They let him in, and eventually he was converted and baptized. He wanted to know the love of the one get angry. After some time, Moses was praying in his room when he was mugged by four men. He was still big and tough, though, and managed to catch and tie up all four of these men. He brought the men to the monks' prayer meeting and dumped them in the middle of the room as they were praying, saying, I don't think Christ would want me to hurt these men. What should I do? Turned out these four were thieves from Moses' former gang. They went from trying to mug their former leader to conversion. Father Moses became their spiritual leader. Some looked at Father Moses and saw an imposing figure and a bandit, but the spiritually enlightened saw the potential. 
they saw how his life could change. When we see the world like these monks did, it makes us more graceful and grateful. We treat others better and stop judging so harshly because we really never know the whole story. And the more we learn, the more we understand, the the more our hearts break for the hardships others experience. What really matters is that as we struggle, we are engaged. We are making an effort. Remember how Israel had to paint the blood of this animal on the doorpost? That's like how we participate. That's us joining in with God saying, look, I'll bring this sacrifice. I can't make things right on my own, but what I can do is make an effort to do my part to acknowledge and trust God. You know, I used to hear Passover, and I always thought it meant that judgment was being passed on the Egyptians, and that the judgment would pass over the Israelites if they sacrificed this animal. But that's not quite right. Passover actually means protection. God's protection is provided to all those who respond to God. Trust the Lord, and you join in with the family of God working together. So we, as the community of God, have an important role to play in this Passover experience. Not only do we participate uh, in receiving God's protection, we become God's community offering protection to others. So, Uh, As we do this, as we work to protect others, our job is to reserve judgment. We let God be the judge of people and their situations. For now, we offer them protection, just like those monks, just like God would do. And don't miss the other part about gathering the family together. We are working to build community, to make sure everyone has a chance to participate and that there is enough food for everyone to celebrate God's work among us. So how do we do this? What are the concrete steps we can take? Well, our VBS summer camp is certainly building community. People who would otherwise not hear about Jesus are getting a chance to hear the stories in the Bible and experience firsthand the love and care of the church community. There's the cereal collection we had throughout the past week to help feed those that don't have enough food. We are answering the call of Passover with VBS. Build community and protect the vulnerable. I also think of how when people are in need, we have discretionary funds, money reserved just for helping people who are in a tough place. Every once in a while, we hear about someone who went through a serious crisis or can't pay their bills. We step in and support these folks. We offer the protection of God when life is difficult. Uh, This week, my family, the Nevilles, had a, a new member join our family. It's just for a little while. Uh, but we are doing respite care as foster parents to a boy that is just nine years old. Uh, He had already met Emily, my wife, and the boys when I finally arrived home this week. Uh, When I walked in, Emily introduced me and said, this is Brian, you can call him Brian or Mr. Brian or even Dad if you want. And this boy, he took to that like fish to water. He said, I can call him Dad? And when she agreed, I have been dad to him ever since. Uh, He asked me to call him son, which Emily and I found quite endearing. He's been trying to help as much as he can and learning the rules of our house, uh, keeping the suds, the bubbles from the washing machine, inside the machine is now one of our new rules in our house. It has been an eventful week in our home. The other day he realized You can uh, just ask our device to play a song. So he tried it out. He asked for a song called Savage Love, and I'd never heard it before, and I don't recommend it, especially not for younger, younger ears, but it's about unrequited love. One loves, but the other doesn't. One of the lines goes like this, Every night and every day I try to make you stay, but I still want that savage love. Do you know what it's like to grow up without a mom or dad? My heart aches just thinking about how tough a young boy's life could be. 
Children can carry scars that are mental and physical and even spiritual. We want to protect children from further hurt. We want to do what we can to make things better, to make every child's future brighter. That is the promise of the Passover and the family of God. You have adopted children. Some of you have taken these kinds of steps to help others. Some of you have adopted children. Some will spend a lifetime teaching children. Others have cared for the children of friends and neighbors or volunteered with our VBS program. What choices can you make today to protect others, to let God's Spirit be at work in a person's life today? Make an effort to let God be at work through you, through your life, Maybe it's joining in with the church in the work we're doing. Maybe it's volunteering for that organization you've been thinking about. Maybe it's making that big change, reorganizing your life from top to bottom to put God first in your life again. Let today be the start of a new day for you. Like Moses and the Israelites, like Father Moses the Black, you are free this day by the powerful work of God. Let your freedom be the beginning of grace, free of judgment, free of anger, free to actively participate in God's redemption, and always ready to protect those who need it most. Amen? Amen. For everything happening at Grace, check out our website at gumc.org.